So what are the areas that uh, you could say conservatives and progressives could agree on and actually work on policies together? They're numerous. The, that's the dirty secret of polarization is that most people agree on most things, and cl including conservatives and progressives. The divisions are driven largely by um, the political parties for organizational purposes in, in the media. People themselves have a lot of the same concerns. So if you, um, one of the interesting comments during the last election was people saying, if I don't vote for Bernie, I'll vote for Trump. And people in Washington couldn't get their head around that. What they were really saying was the issues that they cared about, which is displacement from the workforce, globalization, um, America's role in the world, uh, the role of uh, crony capitalism and big business, had, they had very similar views. And I actually think a lot of Americans hold similar views and, and question a lot of those uh, traditional policies that we have. So there's a lot of areas. Um, right now, for example, the, the internet being very dominated by Facebook and Google and Amazon and so forth, most Americans are suspicious of the amount of power that's being held by those uh, entities. So that would be one area that I would see them uh, focused on. Uh, you could easily get something, uh, I think, uh, passed as far as you know, regulating or thinking about how we interact with that. Um, so uh, surprisingly, I think uh, an issue much more important for progressives uh, than conservatives is climate change. But there are, uh, the debate is so theoretical and much of the actual practical policies of getting it changed, uh, if we focused on those and we use different language for different audiences, that's actually an area we could uh, move ahead on. Um, so I actually think if you would go down the list of issues, crime, safety, terrorism, um, the economy, I think most people uh, want to see uh, something happen. And what's emerged in the Republican Party under Trump is a much more um, government focused uh, group of people than traditional Republicans. So they actually want government solutions. And that's sort of new. That also creates uh, opportunities. The other thing is that for years, conservatives have, have argued that decisions should be made at the local level. Um, and progressives did not like that because they remember what happened during the civil rights battle when Democratic uh, leaders at the local level refused to respond to federal uh, civil rights laws. But now I'm hearing progressives talk about localism, which is really another word for l solving our problems more locally. Um, so that's a real opportunity between more libertarian and, uh, conserv and conservatives and progressives to get decision making back at the local level and take as much as you could from Washington, where so much of it is, is uh, not very realistic in what they're trying to accomplish. So the question is, what can individuals do to address polarization in the culture? And uh, I guess with my, my background in, in spirituality, I would fundamentally say it's something in people's hearts that they have to actually um, stop hating each other and stop justifying that hatred. So that would be the first place I would start in your own heart. More practically speaking, in a more like secular way, um, people need to get outside of their bubbles. We have sorted ourselves right now into such categories that now people don't know anyone and with, that they can have a serious conversation with who shares a political viewpoint that they disagree with. And that sorting and sorting and sorting has continued and continued and continued. And now people are literally moving to locations and people are only reading certain materials and people are defriending people who disagree with them. So, if you want to stop that, you're going to have to, one, in your own group, say, be very brave and say, hey, there's some good people on the other side, and we should figure out ways to work with them, which is very courageous. And then also get outside of your own bubble and actually get to know and be curious as to why people hold viewpoints different from your own. Because I do a lot of facilitation of left and right, what's stunning is that people say, well, I kind of agree with you on that. That's how I view it. So they're very surprised. They might end up with different policies and they might end up with different political parties, but many people agree on many more things and they see the common humanity of each other. So that's the key for me in, in breaking down polarization. There's a lot of technical things, whether it's the media or campaign finance reform or you know, winner takes all elections. We could do reforms, but I do think it's gonna to have to be in people's hearts uh, to make that change. And we will suffer greatly if we continue in the path to polarization because it will actually freeze up the gears of government 
and we will have um, a crisis. So how do you work with people that you disagree with and you disagree with in a really big way? How do you do it? And the first thing is that in our culture today, we, through our technology and our ability to watch TV when we want and have the music we want, our consumer culture has trained us to get what we want when we want it. And it actually fuels narcissism at some level that we're all kind of operating with. The ability to work with people who are strangers or have different worldviews or have different viewpoints is becoming a lost art. We are so used to getting what we want and we're only interested in hanging out with people like us. The only way that's gonna break is if we become curious. That's fundamentally what we need to do. We've got to, when we're talking to somebody or working with somebody and we disagree with them on politics, we've got to rediscover the ability to be curious about them and say, hmm, wow, you believe that? That kind of blows my mind. Help me understand how you came to that position and learn. And we're not really willing to put that kind of energy in generally. And that energy is going to be necessary for us to work together on common issues and be brought together on, on policies that we care about. Uh, we cannot just wait for a crisis, which is really traditionally what's brought America together has been an outside crisis. And so that might happen, but it would be nice if we would not have to wait for an outside force to force us to work together. But uh, in the meantime, the, my tip is, my tips on that would be get curious about people who differ from you. We all have to really uh, learn to understand where they're coming from. And it doesn't mean we have to agree. America is created on disagreement and debate. It's purposely built into our system. That's why there's three branches of government. That's why we have the various parties. That's why we have the checks and balances. It was always meant to be intention. That's natural. What's not natural is demonization and hatred of people who disagree with you. So what are the ways that we could get away from judging and being judged? One of the tricks, I think, is to start with the premise that the person that you disagree with or you feel is judging you is doing it from a motivation that is uh, evil, that is in, you know, in, they're doing it from a, a bad motivation and try to understand where they might be coming from. What is their motivation? And don't ascribe bad motivations to people. When you get into this work and you get deep into it, you will meet people with dark motives. <laughs> uh, people who are, are pretty dark. Um, so they exist. But most people, it's not true. They're actually coming to this work from really good motives. So assuming that their motives are good, starting that way. Right now, what we do is we assume that the person who we're debating or fighting with or in political disagreement with has evil motives. And we ascribe a whole meme, a whole list of characteristics to that person without ever knowing them. Uh, we just know they're affiliation, or we've seen them in a clip, so we create whole stories about people. Resist that temptation, and uh, again, be interested in who they are as human beings and what motivates them, and look for the common humanity in people. And I find that when I'm building coalitions and I can get the, that to happen, we can pull it together. Also, if you're very serious about this, understand that we're really operating in different value systems and with different, meaning completely different worldviews, and that words mean different things to different people in those value systems. So you're going to have to, if you really want to do the work, when I'm bringing together a, a coalition or if I'm lobbying on an issue and I'm speaking to Democrats one day and Republicans the next, I will have completely different language that will resonate with them because language is also a reflection of values. And there's certain words that send messages to people that you, I, I want to keep engaging with you or not. And so if you really want to get into it, you would have to learn that. Uh, I do find that if you have a good heart and you're seriously interested in people who you disagree with and you screw up, but both people have a good heart, it still works because they're not going to attack the motivations. They're really trying to solve something. So the good news is start with a good heart and assume that they have a good heart and go from there. You might be proven wrong, but don't start with they're the bad 
evil person and I'm the good person.